this is a major topic uh, of the time. I wanted to know uh, the experts' views of how possible China can react to this trade war. Excellent. I do enjoy it. So I'm trying to give you a very balanced view of the whole conflict between uh, US and China. And it is not just about economics. It is a holistic anal analysis taken into account of politics, history, international relations, and of course economics, so as to better understand you know, what is the force driving this and what are the policy responses from China's perspective and also what will be the likely outcome that we all care very, very much. Today, I just want to emphasize, this is a short-term view on the trade war, conditional on the responses of Beijing and the US in the next few months. This is by far not a long-term view here. First of all, we must understand what does the US want. Because if you do not get this assumption right, all the conclusion will be different. So is the US, after all, going after commercial interests, meaning the trade deficit? Or you believe the US is going way beyond commercial interests, which is containment, to contain China from becoming a global power. I belong to the camp who believe the US wants to contain China. And hence, the presentation is completely based on this assumption. The trade deficit between the US and China last year was 375 billion. This is not a very large number. Do you know why? Do you know how much Beijing spent in the past two weeks? 60 billion on Africa. Another 80 billion on Russia. So 80 plus 60, the two weeks, two to three weeks already spent 140 billion. At least committed to spend. Okay? So if Trump is really going after the trade deficit, to China, this is a matter of paying the cash. And China indeed offered to cut the trade deficit by half within two years. So no problem, they have a lot, right? So to me, this is not about the trade deficit. The trade deficit is just the trigger point. There are a lot more going on here. First of all, the US is not very happy about made in China 2025. Why? Because China has been positioning to be the future leader of 5G platform. Okay? And, 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 you, and China has very ambitious plan to become a technological leader in AI and robotics. Okay? And this happened at a time the US feel that they are being challenged in this technological space. So what is driving consumption in China is debt, also debt, more than income. In fact, if you guys follow the Chinese economy closely, this year the retail sales number are quite soft. Why, why are they soft, right? It's because of the first of the P2P platform translate immediately into less consumption power. Because the P2P platform mostly target young people. You can borrow a lot of money from the P2P without any collateral, and now it grow up, okay? So this guy immediately lost a lot of money, and, it, and that translate immediately into retail sales figures. <coughs> By the way, I am not, let me repeat, I am not suggesting the collapse of the Chinese economy. No, I'm not. I'm just telling you, the domestic demand, what is driving China's domestic demand, if export is not a big deal. Let's see how strong and how sustainable is domestic demand. And domestic demand, and in particular personal consumption, is driven, has been driven by credit, much more so than disposable income. China export 505 billion to the US, but China at the, at the same time only import 155 from the US. So in the extreme case scenario, where Trump imposed 25% tariff on 500 billion, 
but the Chinese can do so much on 160. So that's why Trump has so much confidence. Let's take a look from the food security angle. Because many people say, even in China, they say, they should retaliate against the US. They should retaliate on soybeans. China has the capacity to grow the soybeans by herself, and yet China imports so much from the US year after year after year after year. Because they have taken the farmland for urbanization and for construction of property. property. So this way you earn money much faster. China also depends heavily on the US, especially on semiconductor. Now, this chart here, if I replace top 10 banks in the world by revenue, then the Chinese are the champion. At least four or five brands from China, top 10 in terms of asset, in terms of revenue. But in terms of semiconductor, we do not see any Chinese. This will be a war of attrition. You have to take a look at your health. Do you have enough bullets you know, to, to fight longer? Then we have to compare how leverage is the economy between the two powers. For the sake of simplicity, I use the border smasher. Money supply divided by GDP. In the US, it's about 0 0.7 now. China is 2.0. Probably in the case of the, the, the US, because of the Lehman Brothers and the subprime crisis 10 years ago, they had the leverage quite a lot already. But on the other hand, China's household debt in the past two, especially in the past two years, went up quite fast. And also the bulk of corporate debt is still very large. That's why Xi Jinping wanted to have a deleveraging campaign. They want to deleverage the economy because this means long-term risk. This is like a time bomb. The US has tremendous debt as well. I mean, the US government is broke. It is in debt. So why are you saying this? Okay, that is also true. But the difference is the following: the rest of the world is willing to finance the deficit in the U.S. by buying U.S. treasury. In the case of China, can China sell the debt to the rest of the world? Not until the capital account is open. And the market so far is on the side of the U.S. You look at the A share. You look at the Asia and you look at the Hansen Index. The Dow Jones yesterday almost reached an all-time high. So the market does not. The market does, seems to be on the side of Donald Trump, and that's why he is so cocky. So what are the next moves from China? In my opinion, this is the most likely scenario. Do not let the renminbi depreciate defend the currency, impose strong capital control, you put a temporary break on the leveraging, flood the market with liquidity, drive interest rate lower, and then you buy time and wait for the November election result. Okay, this is the most likely scenario, the least costly. Scenario two, which is the quite the funniest one, the journalists like this very much. Okay, let's pay show hand. Let's kill each other. The journalists always like to talk about this. Dump US Treasury. So if China start dumping US Treasury, what will happen? US bond yield will go up. US interest rate will go up even more. And the dollar against the renminbi will strengthen even more. You are creating depreciation pressure for yourself. And what do you do with the money after you sold the US Treasury? What do you buy? Italian bonds? Spanish bonds? High yield? JGB close to zero. What do you buy? Or buy their own bonds, but they don't trust themselves. <laughs> If they trust themselves, why would they buy so much U.S. Treasury, right? And scenario three is the most interesting because 
all of the people that I have met in China, regardless of seniority, tell me this scenario is absolutely impossible. China surrender. <laughs> Give in and open up. They tell me retaliation scenario has higher probability than this one. I'm not saying that the economy will collapse. I do not suggest that at all. But I'm purely saying in this game of trade war, U.S. seems to have the upper hand. But from a trend perspective, what will happen? It's, it's the same consequence on all scenarios. Foreign reserve in China is very difficult to go back up under this trade war scenario here. And economic growth, if China cannot leverage up the economy, or even if they do, uh, the effectiveness of that leverage will be much smaller than before. Which area in China will be hit the hardest? It's southern China. Why? Remember the first slide I argued, export as a share of GDP is only 20%. Yes, that's true from a nationwide perspective. But we have not taken into account the highly geographical concentration nature of Chinese export is all in southern China. Now this number will become not 20% but become 30%. If we divide export from Pearl River Delta divided by the nation's GDP, this number go up to 30%. And in fact, the Pearl River Delta export as a share of Pearl River Delta GDP is over 50. It's 52%. So that means should this trade war escalate to the fullest extent, southern China will be hit the hardest. So then we can say southern China. China is so big. So only southern China do well is okay. So China will have to uh, make some choices uh, very soon. Um, Trump is forcing China to make a choice. This is so-called the impossible trinity, a macroeconomic concept. You can only choose two out of the three, but not all three. The prime beneficiary of trade war is Southeast Asia. Why? It happened in the 80s when Ronald Reagan was launching trade at trade war with Japan. Jap Japan moved all the companies to Thailand. This will happen again. There's already many people making inquiry. You know, relocating the business here. Not only Vietnam and Bangladesh, Southeast Asia, maybe Indonesia will even benefit. This is the last slide, okay? So I use the last slide, you know, with a big question mark. So it seems there's no conclusion.